Hi, welcome to the experimental portion of the dual loop experiment, which has become actually a um, multi loop experiment, but that's okay, the more the merrier. What you see in front of you is an Agilent LCR meter that's been on for 30 minutes to get, allow it to warm up. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up for measurement. So we're going to go to the measurement setup window. And the measure, and now you probably can't see the fine writing there, but we're setting it for the LS RS measurement mode, which is the inductance in series, resistance in series measurement. We're setting the frequency to 500 hertz. I like to measure on the lower frequency, uh, with a lower frequency, because uh, as you move your frequency lower, your capacitive coupling is reduced. So it allows your inductance measurement to express itself. Can't go too low, though. If you go too low, you won't be able to measure your inductance either. Uh, we're going to set the number of averages to 32, which it's, which it's already set to. Um, so we're pretty much already set up, ready to go. Next we're going to do is the compensations. We go to the correction screen. And first we're going to select the open compensation. Here's the fixture. This compensation compensates for the fixture. This is a fixture I developed for my graduate thesis. It's designed to minimize inductance uh, and capacitance of the fixture. And so what we're going to do now is, is do the open compensation. What, open meaning there's nothing attached to the leads. And we're going to hit tell it to measure. What this is doing is measuring the, basically the cap straight capacitance in the fixture so it can remove that from the measurements. After we do the open compensation, we're going to do the short compensation. And with the short compensation, I have a brass block here with screws that are soldered to the face. And two sets of screws are at half inch distance. The other set of screws are at uh, 5 8 inch distance. This fixture uses the 5 8 inch screws. So we will put the 5 8 inch screws between the terminals and put the nuts on the ends of the screws. And sock it down. Okay, and then we will select short and short measurement. wait for that to be done. Next what we'll do is while that's the next thing we're going to do and I'll introduce it before we get there is to use a known inductance. We'll be using this large rectangular loop on the outside of this printed circuit board which has got a known inductance to me of 274 nano -Henrys. as computed for my graduate thesis using the new induction models and, and verified with this with this instrument here. Compensations. We're going to put our known inductor on there just to verify that the instrument is working properly and is set up properly. Now we have 32 averages set up, so it's going to take a. Uh, let me get back to the measures display. We got uh, 10 average, uh, 32 averages, so it's going to take a little bit for the meter to respond to the correct answer after I remove my hands. Because while I'm touching it, I'm, I'm really messing it up a lot. Okay. Give it a second, give it a second, give it a second. Okay. 272 nano -Henrys, 271. That's close enough for government work. put the 22 gauge disc on first. to make these measurements as quickly as possible. Okay, hands away, get the metal away. And the measurement we're going to get is 876, 877 nanometers. Okay, we have a check resistance. Okay, we calculated that the series resistance of this path should be 40.16 milliohms and 
we're getting 40.3 which is beautiful so 879 870 878 nanohenries looks like a reasonable Answer. Eight seven eight. Okay. And the reason why we have the check resistance is to make sure that you know the wire diameter is substantially of the right diameter and that the uh, contacts are sufficiently making contact at the fixture. Because if our resistance is way off, that means that either we don't have it socked down right, or the wire is not exactly the right diameter. Okay. Uh, 26 gauge. The check resistance on the 26 gauge is 101.5 milliohms. While I'm touching it, it's overloading because it's messing up all of its ability to measure so okay hands away tools away and we got 900 let's see our it's 102 million 103 milliohms that's perfect and it, we get 950 three 953 nano Henry's is good okay Careful, this 30 gauge wire is very delicate. I'm working on a wood surface. There's steel frame under the table, but it's far away. It's at the edge of the table back here, We're far away from the loop. Tools away. And our check resistance is 257 milliohms. We're getting 265. Uh, okay, six, 10 milliohms is not too bad. I'm, I'm assuming that this wire is just a little bit thinner than 30 gauge. And so we're basically getting 1,010 1, nano henries, or 1,009 nano henries. Okay, next, we're going to do the collapsed loop. I have to warn you, I don't know how this is going to come out, but let's let you know the collapsed loop is basically, it's same length as the other loops, it's 30 gauge wire but it's been put on a drill and spun down so there's no area in the loop. This is just the effects, well, I don't want to say just the effects of the wire, but there's no area, let's just say it that way. We'll, we'll discuss this more in the follow-up. Let's just get the measurement done while the instrument is still compensated for. But just to warn you, it may come out negative because of the way this meter me reads. It should be around 200 nanohenries. Let's see what we get. I'm going to get my hands away. But sometimes it comes up negative. Okay, 145 nanohenries is fine. If it comes up negative, that means... Uh, If it comes up negative, that's because the meter wasn't set up properly and we're reading more capacitive. If you go to a higher frequency, you have a higher probability this value is going to come up negative. That's why I picked a low frequency of 500 hertz, so we'll get a much more accurate measurement. And again, our check, because we got the same length, it should be about 200. And remember, the last loop was 
was 10 milliohms greater than this, and we're still getting 10 milliohms greater, which means that the wire is a little bit thinner than 30 gauge, and we're getting about 150 nanohammers.